we are going to talk about how you can accept or reject prefixes into your BGP table. Cisco's tool for doing this is called a prefix list. And the way it works is you have incremental configuration, which means each line of the prefix list is evaluated one by one, and then the next line is evaluated against the prefix it's trying to match until it reaches the bottom. You can apply it on the inbound or outbound direction, which means towards prefixes announced towards you or prefixes that you are trying to announce. It's based on network numbers using the familiar IP address and Netmask format um, or CIDR. The prefix list in Cisco ends with an implicit default deny. A long time ago, Cisco IOS had access lists for filtering prefixes, and they've deprecated it since then. We strongly discourage you from using access lists for two reasons. Firstly, they're inefficient in the way that the iOS does the matching. And secondly, they use wildcard masks, which makes it very easy to make mistakes. So this slide shows you the syntax of a prefix list. You will notice that the syntax is the same for IPv4 or IPv6. The only difference being the first keyword is either IP or IPv6. To create a prefix list line, you say IP prefix list, and then you give it a name. You have an optional sequence, and then either you're going to permit or deny this particular network. You specify the network and the subnet mask length. And then you have two optional modifiers. There is GE and LE. GE specifies you want to have a match of greater than or equal to the network and length that you specified earlier. LE means you want to match prefixes which are less than or equal to the network that you previously specified. And we shall see examples of this to make it slightly clearer. The sequence number is also optional, and if you do not want Cisco IOS to display the sequence numbers inside the running configuration, you can say no IP prefix list sequence number for IPv4 or no IPv6 prefix list sequence number to turn off that display. Juniper has something similar. In Juniper, you have prefix lists which do something else, but the equivalent tool for doing prefix list filtering is called a root list. This slide shows you the syntax of how you would construct a root list. You'd say root dash filter, and then the prefix that you want to match, and then a match type, which we shall look at on the next slide, and then an optional action. So prefix, like we've said, is a network and its length that you're trying to match. Match type is a group of optional keywords, and then we shall see how the actions work. This slide shows you the different match types and the conditions under which they will match. So match type exact means the advertised prefix, including the subnet mask, must match this entry exactly. This is similar to typing the Cisco IP prefix list without any LE or GE entries. Longer means the advertised prefix is a subnet that is part of the network number, but the prefix length is longer. So this is a subnet that could be part of this larger subnet. Or longer means you have a prefix that matches the entry, including the length, plus any longer prefixes. So the difference between or longer and longer is the second one, or longer, includes the aggregate in the matches, and longer only includes the sub-prefixes. You can also say prefix length range, and you give it X and Y, and that means the advertised route has to be a subset of the network, but the prefix length is going to be anywhere between X and Y inclusive. Or you can say up to Y, which is very similar to the previous one. And in this case, the advertised route matches that particular network that you specified, or it's a sub-prefix, but the prefix length has to be the network that you specified earlier, all the way up to the length of Y inclusive. There is also a through match type, which is not used a lot, as noted on the slides, so we shall not spend a lot of time on this one. These are some examples of prefix lists. The first one is how you deny the default route in IPv4. So you have IP prefix list, e.g. deny 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, .0, 0. 
to deny the default root in IPv6, you just have IPv6 prefix list, the name is eg-v6, and then you deny colon colon slash zero. The next one is how you'd permit 35 slash eight, and the last one is how you'd permit 2001 db8 slash 32. For Juniper, the equivalent for the previous prefix lists are shown on this slide. So to deny the default root in IPv4, you'd say root filter 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0, exact, and then you'd have an action of reject. To deny the default root in V6, you'd also have root filter colon colon 0, exact, reject. To permit the slash 8 prefix, you'd also say root filter 35 slash 8, accept. And you can also permit the db8 slash 32 as shown in the last example. So back to Cisco, if you want to deny a slash 12, we've already seen this, it's prefix list eg deny 172.16.00 slash 12. In the second example, you also want to deny the slash 16 in IPv6, but the third example shows a more typical use case. You do not want to deny just that particular subnet, but you want to match more than the subnet that you've specified. So in this case, we have IP prefix list EG. We are permitting 192.0.0.0 slash 8 LE24, which means this is going to match anything out of that slash 28, which has a subnet mask of a slash 8 all the way to a slash 24. Addresses with a slash 25, 26, 27, all the way to a slash 32 will not be matched by this prefix list. In the condition that you don't have any other lines inside this prefix list, that means those longer prefixes will be denied. Same thing for IPv6, you have 2000 colon colon slash 3, and you want to permit everything up to a slash 48, and this is how you'd specify it with a LE less than or equal to. Juniper equivalent is shown on this slide, the exact ones we've already seen before. But to permit 192 slash 8, any prefix that is up to a slash 24, you say root filter 192.0.0 slash 8, the match is up to 24, and then the action is accept. And same thing for IPv6, root filter 2000 colon colon 3 up to slash, up to 48, accept. Now we look at the GE modifier. If you want to deny explicitly a slash 25 and above, you'd say IP prefix list EG 192.0.0.0 slash 8 GE 25. So you're explicitly saying that anything that is a 25 all the way to a slash 32 out of the 192.0.0.0 slash 8 block will be denied. It has a very similar effect as a previous example where we used LE 24 except that in this case you are explicitly denying the longer prefixes. Out of 193 slash 8, you can permit prefixes between slash 12 and slash 20 using this line. You have a combination of the GE and the LE match conditions. So you have GE 12, which means greater than or equal to a slash 12, and LE 20, which means less than or equal to a slash 20. So this will permit that 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way to 20, but it does not match 8, 9, 10, 11, as well as anything greater than 20 out of the slash 8 block. Lastly is a common example of how to permit all IPv4 prefixes. So you're permitting 0.0.0 slash .0, 0, which is the shortest prefix possible, LE32, which means anything as long as it matches any possible IPv4 address. Juniper has equivalents to these same examples in this slide as shown below. For 192 slash 8, if you want to deny a slash 25 and above, you say you match the root filter 192.0.0.0 slash 8, prefix length 25, 32, and then you have the action of reject. For 193 slash 8, if you want to permit prefixes between a slash 12 and a slash 20, you say root filter 193.0.0.0 slash 8, prefix length range 12, 20. If you want to permit all prefixes, you say root filter 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 
slash zero or longer. And that will match all possible addresses. This is a full example of how you apply prefix lists to Cisco configuration. You have router BGP as shown previously. You have your neighbor with the address 102.10.1.1. And in the inbound direction, you have applied the prefix list AS110-in. And in the outbound direction, you have applied the red AS110-out prefix list. So for the inbound direction, you're denying 218.10.0.0 slash 16, and then you're permitting everything else with permit 0 slash 0 LE32. This is very common to make sure you filter out your own aggregate towards yourself. For the outbound, you're permitting 105.7.0.0 slash 16, and then you're denying everything else, which means you want to announce only this particular aggregate. Juniper root lists cannot be applied individually to the neighbor the way Cisco ones can, and they have to be part of a big policy, which we shall look at at the very last end when we are looking at the policy languages for both Cisco and Juniper. Different vendors will either copy the way Cisco does it or the way Juniper does it.